Hello and welcome. Welcome back to those uh, returning and welcome to those who have just dived in on this tutorial 15. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a short set of videos on how to get used to IBM software and how to use it. And in particular, in the last couple of tutorials, we've taken a little bit of a segue off onto learning Viata. And I've been showing some of the tools that can help you get used to using Viata so that when you dive into software, it won't be brand new and you'll have seen the command line, you'll have seen the structure of the commands that you need to run and none of it will feel sort of third party and very foreign. Um, so the idea is use some tools locally that can get you used to Viata. So in the last tutorials, I've been showing how to basically set it up, put a host name on it, um, set up the basic thing. And then we started doing some routing using static routes and OSPF. But one of the most common things that you will need to do or people use a Viata for within software is to be the endpoint of a VPN tunnel. So today we are actually going to cover how to set up an IPsec VPN tunnel from an east wing or an east site to a west site on Viata. So our plan of attack today is this. To do this, we're gonna, on my Mac here, I'm gonna create a VBox and I'm gonna call this VBox Internet. And it's gonna have two class A addresses. And you can probably guess already, the fact that it's called Internet is it's there to emulate the, you know, that it is the Internet. Uh, we're then going to create two more V-boxes, one called East and one called West. And the East one will be emulating an internal 172.16 uh, private address range, Class B private address range, as if it was a, you know, a site or a data center within your business environment. On the West, we'll be having a remote office. Um, and that will have a class C 192.168. That could be your remote site, could be your home office, etc. Uh, we'll be using a very similar setup when we do remote access, um, because again, remote access would use an IPsec VPN tunnel. So it'll be very, very similar. But for this, what we're wanting to do is to connect east to west through the internet or through our fake internet and have an IPsec VPN tunnel running through that. So we're going to configure that up and then we're going to create two more uh, VBox machines. So in the end, you'll end up with five virtual box machines running. Um, to keep memory within boundaries, I'm going to use damn small Linux on those machines. Uh, one will be connected to the east, one will be connected to the west, and then we're going to ping test through. So how does that look? Well, it looks like this. There's our three Viatas. We've got the internet up here on a 64 and a 38. We've got an internal office data center down here on a class B 172.16 with our damn small Linux number one. And over on the other side, on the west, we're going to have another Viata with a 192.168 and another host machine running damn small Linux. And we're going to create this tunnel between these two machines so that you can VPN in. Well, let's get going. I guess we've got some work to do and creating lots and lots of virtual machines. So first, let's go and set up VBox for all of these networks that we're going to need. So we're going to need a 64, a 38, a 192 and a 172 network. My name is Eamon Killian. I hope you enjoy this tutorial on getting a site-to-site -site VPN link set up on Viata. Mac, um, I said at the last few minutes of the previous video that uh, the first thing we would need is four networks. So I've just opened up uh, Oracle's virtual box and I'm going to go into preferences and looking at preferences I probably have some in here already I'm going to create some host only networks so what I'm going to do first is just eradicate all of these previous networks. God knows what the address range was. Um, I've been playing around in a future video. We will be playing around with uh, Open vSwitch. So that's what I've been doing in here. So you want to start from scratch, clean, no host only networks. And we're going to add the first one. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to just be ultra, ultra sure on this. I'm going to go OK and I'm going to kill VirtualBox. I've had some foibles with this in the past where it hasn't quite started off clean. 
So again, just starting it up again. Into networks, host only networks, nothing there. Perfect. So first network, what do we want? We want a 64. So let's add VBOX0. It's going to be 64.0.0.0. Um, you want to put the, the actual um, IP that will emulate for us this network. Um, I usually choose five. Um, I'm going to put it on zero. Class A, standard Class A. DHCP server, none. We don't want any because we're going to be giving our machine a 64001 and a 64002. So we don't need any DHCP. We're going to create a static address on both sides of our uh, router. Okay, that's that network. The next one is uh, VBOXnet1. This is on a 38, so exactly the same again. We're going to go for a 38, 0, 0, and dot 5. It's class A, so I'm going to give it a class A mask. Perfect. Again, no DHCP. We'll be doing this by hand. Next up, a 172. So we want to create a 172.16 dot... Well, let's make it dot zero um, and put this on address number five. This will be giving out, um, sorry, class B subnet mask. This will be giving out addresses. So we are going to create a DHCP server. Um, we're going to have as the server's um, DHCP server, we're going to have dot 100. This is going to be two... 5525500 and I usually do from 101 to 254 again that's just habit there'll be rules probably around how you give out DHCP address ranges but for the purposes of this I like to use 101 to 254 so that's that network and finally a 192 so same again, oh, it's already got a 192. I'm gonna use 1.5 um, for this address, class C, enable it. Oops, let me take this so it's a bit easier. It's gonna be on 100, as we did before, 255, standard class C, and 101. To 254. So that's dot one. Let me just check that I haven't put a dot zero in. That's fine. So there's our four networks. So now we have four networks. Go OK. We're going to use the Viata standard, a template Viata that I had before, and we're going to set this so that it's going to be on the uh, two networks. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. Instead of when I say use it, we're going to clone this. So right click clone, we're going to call this internet, we're going to reinitialize its MAC addresses, we're going to do a full clone, and we're going to hit clone. So this is taking the standard templated uh, VYOS installation that we did in tutorial 14, and it's going to create a clone for us called internet. There it is down here, we're going to move this to the top of our list internet okay now the settings on this really everything else is absolutely fine and we're going to go straight to the network and we're going to say yeah enable that but it's going to be a host only adapter net zero so that is the first side uh, ethernet one or sorry ethernet zero this will appear as um let me just change that to deny because i don't want to get into it i don't want to ssh in from my host here Adapter 2, VBOXnet 1, that's absolutely fine. Again, I'll go deny. Okay, so let's just check that network again. So we've got host-only adapter net 0, which is going to be on the 64, and host-only adapter net 1, which is going to be on the 38. Okay, and for both of those, I've done a deny on allowing the host machine access. So it's going to come up as a you know a fast Ethernet here on both of these adapters, and that's fine. 
Make sure their Ethernet addresses aren't the same by accident. No, that's absolutely fine. Okay. And let's just power this up. See what it comes up as. This will just take a couple of seconds because we've cloned a standard vanilla install of VYOS 113. And this will allow us to uh, configure this Viata. Now, it failed on the install. So let's see what, um, whoops, VYOS and VYOS and do a show interfaces. So it failed there, and I'll tell you why it's failed. It's failed because of the Ethernet addresses. So there are several ways we can fix that. Um, the easiest way is to go into configure mode and then do load slash opt slash viata slash etc slash config dot boot dot default. Do a commit on that and then exit. Um, oh, I should have done, sorry, do a save as well, then exit and then do a power off or a reboot actually we want to do. And let's see what happens this time. So that's just using the default slash opt uh, Viata etc config boot default file to reset this Viata to be what we want it to be. And hopefully when it comes up now we won't have failed on the Ethernet and we will be ready to rock and roll and configure this machine. Give that a couple of seconds. Here's where we had the warning before. No warning this time. So we should now have when we show interfaces, an ETH0 and an ETH1, and they're up, up, that's exactly what we wanted. So join me in the next bit when we will actually configure this machine up as being the internet for us.